You know, remember Robert Durst? He's always in the news, and he is the other big case that we're covering. That's right, California versus Robert Durst. Today, the, they're attempting to seat 12 alternate jurors. So they got 12, and now they're trying to get 12 alternates, which is a lot. Now, Durst, as you remember, he's the eccentric real estate millionaire going on trial this time for the murder of his close friend and one-time spokesperson, Susan Berman. Berman was killed in Beverly Hills back in 2000, but her death isn't the only murder that Durst is accused of being involved with. No siree. Now, Court TV's Vinnie Politan takes a closer look at the legal troubles and trail of bodies associated with Robert Durst. Robert Durst, the eccentric heir of a late prominent New York real estate developer, has aged drastically in front of the cameras from one court appearance to the next. Opening statements in Los Angeles are scheduled to begin this week. The case is built around a story so sensational it inspired a 2010 feature film starring Ryan Gosling titled All Good Things. You make me out to be this person that you think that I am. I'm not this person. Whose tagline reads, the perfect love story until it became the perfect crime. If anything happens to me, don't let them get away with it. Durst is also the subject of a six-part documentary called The Jinx. If nobody tells the whole truth. The show is credited in part with helping investigators build their case atop the evidence unearthed by the Jinx series. But we can't imagine. <laughs> According to a 2019 New York Times report, Durst's defense attorneys were considering a plan to introduce raw audio from his recordings in the jinx. Kill them all, of course. Durst's lawyers assert that the filmmakers selectively pulled out specific lines to make him look guilty and edited them in a different order than how he said them. Durst, now 76, estimated to be worth 100 million, is accused of fatally shooting his best friend Susan Berman in 2000 to keep her silent about the disappearance and presumed killing of his wife Kathleen, who vanished from New York in 1982. Prosecutors say Berman is one of two people Durst killed to cover up the slaying of his first wife. The other murder Durst was charged with is the death of and dismemberment of his elderly neighbor, Morris Black, because Black had discovered Durst's true identity. You can't take the iceberg away from the Titanic, and you can't take away what he did to Morris Black. At the time, to elude arrest, Durst had disguised himself as a mute woman living in a $300 a month rooming house. Bob Durst, a multimillionaire from a billionaire family in New York, was doing living in Galveston in a $300 a month rundown apartment <coughs> that he rented dressed as a woman under an assumed name. Durst was tried and acquitted in the murder of Morris Black. His attorneys claim Durst shot Black in self-defense. Will the defendant please rise? For the verdict of the jury as such, with the jury find the defendant, Robert Durst, not guilty. The judge told would-be jurors facing the prospect of serving five months in the murder trial of Robert Durst that this is a fascinating case. You're never going to have an experience like this. Every minute, we are learning more details about what we can expect in the murder trial of Robert Durst in California. So let's give you some previews, shall we? Prosecutors are going to attempt to prove that the 76-year-old killed Susan Berman and Morris Black. Okay, these are different cases. We're talking about a New York case and a Galveston, Texas case where he was already acquitted. But no, prosecutors in California, they are going to attempt to prove murder for those two cases. And that is in response to this, to the reopening of his wife, Kathy Durst's disappearance. Okay, so just to clarify, Kathy Durst, New York, Susan Berman, California, Black is in Texas. Okay. Both killings took place not long after national media reports named Durst as a suspect in his wife's 1982 disappearance. And both Berman and Black were at one time the defendant's best friends. Got that? All right. Now, prosecutors are also, they believe the victims may have known detail 
details of Kathy Durst's disappearance, possibly leading to Robert Durst's arrest. And there are several more parallels between Berman and Black that we can expect from this trial. Now let's bring in a dear friend of the show, criminal defense attorney, Crystal Ramirez. Crystal, this case is just it's, it's mayhem. It is literally three murders in one from what the prosecution is expected to prove. Right. What are your thoughts initially, just as a criminal defense attorney, how do you feel, okay, wait a minute, they're going to try to prove a murder in New York from 1982, mm -hmm. and then hold on, they want to prove a murder to which my client was already acquitted from Texas mm -hmm. while they're proving the case before the jury a murder in California. Right. So as from a criminal per, uh, defense perspective, you're talking about evidence from 1982. Yes. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I would imagine that you have witnesses whose memory is definitely, you know, have changed um, if those witnesses are still present. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of evidence issues that, that you would consider. Um, also, um, I would imagine that it would take a lot um, to keep a jury um, present for that long, right? Yeah, because, it, the, yes, the trial is expected to last at least four to five months. Right. right. So you're saying just in terms of paying attention? In terms of paying attention um, and, and, and making the connections. Those are, so we're not talking about just one murder. You're talking about three different murders and different venues yeah. with different evidence. But, and, and I understand you, you have to, you know, the, the overall idea is that of, is, is of motive, you know, you know, this is uh, kind of like a, uh, and the way that he um, has acted in the past. There are similar um, uh, actions here in the other cases. Well, so, and that's, I, I think that's why they want to show that Berman and Black are so intertwined. Right. That in fact, so, Morris Black knew who Robert Durst really was. Robert Durst confided in Morris Black, and that's part of the prosecution's theory, which is interesting because it's not, they're not trying to say that Morris Black discovered who Robert Durst was. Mm -hmm. They're saying Durst became friends with Black and decided to take off the wig, mm -hmm. chill out, drink some, I don't know, whiskey and smoke some pot and hang out with his friend and then was like, okay, dude, see, I'm a guy and this is why I'm here. So inevitably, though, Morris Black was using that against Robert Durst and that's why Robert Durst, in fact, murdered him. So that whole fact pattern is very similar to the prosecution's theory that Susan Berman, which, I mean, I, this is far. This is far that they are expected to say, and this is according to the motions, uh, in evidence, in, in the case file of Robert Durst, they're trying to say that Susan Berman witnessed the 1982 killing of Kathy Durst at the hands of Robert Durst. And all of this is to silence her, right? He, he killed her to silence her, in essence. Uh, and so, again, making it out to be that there's this parallel between Berman and Black because they're both witnesses to his crimes or his criminal activity. It just seems like a, lot, a, a ton of connections to make yeah. um, in order to get a conviction. But don't you think also a lot of this is the jurisdiction you're practicing in, that California seems to allow a lot of evidence in of, of these other cases and their rules of evidence are different than perhaps other jurisdictions right. which would be more conservative and wouldn't allow all this, right? Right, right. So I, I would imagine that would have to be the case if they're going to, you know, explore the case in New York and explore the case in, in Texas, you know, it would have to be an option to do that. Um, but even with, with, with that option, it, I just imagine it to be a very difficult task um, over the course of five months to, you know, make those connections. Well, Crystal, if you have uh, movie clips and interview clips and Ryan Gosling on the big screen, I'm just, Crystal Ramirez would be paying attention. You'd be like, okay. And I really think it's true. I think a lot of these high-profile cases, you get jurors who are just more captivated by all of the evidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't you think that as a juror, you would be interested to hear, hey, how did they make all these connections between all of these decades? Definitely. I mean, I think that it is, you know, uh, 
obviously it's something that has been, you know, explored in Hollywood, right? Yes. So, you know, it, it is entertaining in that sense. Um, but, um, I, you know, I, I'm just struggling with, with why bring all the cases together instead of focusing on the California case because if alone. You're, if you're a prosecutor, why wouldn't you? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I think both sides, criminal defense attorneys and prosecutors, we are all going to try to get away with as much as we can. We are going to beg, beg, beg and ask. And the more evidence that gets in that is on our side, you're going to try, you're going to go for it, right? I, I agree from a pro, from that perspective. I, I do understand, you know, let's bring it all in and, and make these connections. But I do think that it is going to be a difficult task to say, okay, follow me here. You got to follow, you got to oh, start yeah, with yeah, me yeah, in, yeah. in New York, you know, oh, and then. And, sure. So I understand. I mean, I think that it's going to be difficult. I think it's going to be a circus. That's what I think. Okay, Christopher Ramirez, <laughs> stay.